Now uh, let's look at our other big story this morning. Police have retreated from the streets and allowed a wave of antisocial behaviour to sweep across England and Wales. That is the view of the Chief Inspector of Constabulary, Sir Dennis O'Connor. He warns cuts to policing could lead to a spiral of economic and social decline. Well, our North of England correspondent Nick Ravenscroft joins us now from Withenshaw in Greater Manchester uh, to look uh, in a little more detail, I think, at these issues, Nick. Greater Manchester has the highest number of antisocial behaviour orders outside of London, an indication perhaps of the scale of the problem or the determination to deal with it. Now this is with and sure, it's a pretty uh, hot spot for antisocial behaviour and we're in a gym here, part of a community group which is for the whole of uh, the people who live on Withenshaw but they particularly try and work with uh, teenagers and young people who are either involved in trouble or who are at risk of getting into trouble. Let's have a word with Greg Davis who's one of the people who runs it. Uh, what is it like living here and working here in terms of antisocial behaviour? Is it every day? Anti uh, incidents of antisocial behaviour is absolutely every day. Uh, um, the, the tragedy is that local people just learn to live with antisocial behaviour, absolutely. And what kind of incidents are typical? Well, only two or three days ago we had a, a shooting in broad daylight, a young man was, was shot dead. Um, and then you, you get what the police describe as low-level incidents, which would be broken windscreens of a car, your tyres being slashed, uh, broken house windows. Well, if you're the, the victim of low-level crime, it doesn't seem like low-level crime, it, it, it affects people's lives. Now, this uh, top police officer, the inspector of constabulary, has today said that the police, in his view, have retreated from the streets. Is that borne out by your experience here in Withenshaw? My answer would be, how would we know if the police have retreated from the streets of Windsor? We very rarely see the police under any circumstances, even when there is uh, sometimes you know, quite major incidents. You very rarely see the police. I mean, it, it's, uh, local people know if you were to phone the police over uh, any reason, it's very rare that the police would attend. And yet the police tell me that across Greater Manchester in the last year, complaints about antisocial behaviour have dropped by 15%. Seems to suggest they're getting a grip on it. I would agree. If you look at crime statistics right across the board, uh, it would seem that the crime rate is falling year on year. If nobody's reporting crime, then obviously the statistics, the statistics will reflect that crime is falling. The, the, the reason crime is falling is that nobody's reporting crime. And why, are nobody, why is nobody reporting it? Yeah, it's quite simple. Nobody has any faith or nobody has any uh, confidence in reporting crime to the police because they don't turn up. All right, Greg Davis, thank you very much. I should also say that there is uh, a very pronounced fear of reprisals, either for talking to the police or, in fact, for talking to the media. The last time I was here very recently, uh, just uh, a mile or so from where I am at the moment, there was a, a brawl in broad daylight on a grass verge involving someone using a, a baseball bat. When I speak to people, spoke to people who were watching after the event, there was no way that anyone uh, would uh, go on camera, no way that anyone would talk to me about it. But as I say, police report a drop in complaints of 15%, and they say that tackling antisocial behaviour here in Greater Manchester, top priority. Nick, many thanks. That was a grim story. Now we're joined by Rob Garnham, who is chair of the Association of Police Authorities in our central London studio. Uh, interesting to talk to you, Mr Garnham, because, of course, police authorities are responsible for bringing the concerns of local communities to policing. That's correct. Uh, one of our duties is to make sure we do represent the communities and we do that by going out talking to them, also responding to their complaints. And then we sit with the chief constable and their team. We set the local policing priorities, the local policing plan, and we make sure that chief constable is delivering. And so are you, like the police, um, guilty of not actually doing enough to address concerns over antisocial behaviour? I think what we've got to recognise is there's, there's certainly victims of ASB, there's certainly members of the public whose lives are blighted by ASB, and we, we have to do more. We recognised last year as police authorities there's an issue here, and we sought um, powers from the Home Office, from the last government, giving us greater powers to intervene when the public are unhappy, giving us greater powers to address some of the complaints that were coming our way. And I'm pleased this year, earlier this year, the Home Office and the government gave us those powers. So there's still work to be done. There is some good news in that report, but what matters really is not what matters to the policing. What matters is what happens to the victims. And we've got to make sure that we tackle ASB to their satisfaction. Well, yes, that's right. And one of the things I suppose that comes out of the report is that um, victims who are the victims of repeat um, problems with antisocial behaviour and victims who are vulnerable are not flagged up sufficiently within the system in most of the forces in this country. 
I think that's key. Um, we, we, we saw the Pilkington case in Leicestershire, a, a terrible tragedy. What we need to make sure is that we respond to repeat callers, to repeat victims. And it's not to say that we're dismissing them, oh, that's so-and-so on the phone again. Let's make sure we have that early intervention. But not just from policing. Let's work with partners in adult care, in youth offending, and together, get together and say, look, we're having the same calls from the same families. What are the issues? Let's make sure we deal with them rather than dealing with them in isolation. And yet, I mean, I suppose one thing that will puzzle some of our views is why this hasn't happened already, because they will remember back to the Pilkington case that you mentioned, a tragic case of a mother and daughter who got completely to the end of their tether and committed suicide. Um, and at the time, all of this was said, that victims of repeat offences, vulnerable victims, mustn't be left to cope with this in isolation. I, I think that's right, and as I say, progress has been made. I, I can cite examples from my own police authority in Gloucestershire where working with the constabulary. We've brought people together under the Public Protection Bureau to make sure that the agencies looking after vulnerable people make sure that they are talking to each other and providing that early intervention. But police authorities are there to hold chief constables to account and to see how they deliver that policing plan. I think what that means in the future as we move forward on police reform, we're going to have a really serious debate about the operational independence. Um, and I think that's something that we'll, the public will be interested in. Rob Garnham, thank you so much for joining us. Quarter to 11, the headlines.